Hi everyone, this is Jason Zach from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to work on our arpeggio playing. It could be your arpeggios from both your hands. It could be the left hand or the right hand. But I'll focus a bit more energy into the left hand since we tend to ignore the left hand at times. And I'm not going to give you a very advanced left hand arpeggio pattern. We have some of these very, you know, where virtuoso-like patterns where the hand goes sometimes across three octaves, you know, and it's not very easy at times. You'll have to literally move your chair a bit back if you have a, a paunch, if you know what I mean. So, it, uh, we'll keep a one octave arpeggio system and we'll keep it very simple. First of all, you need to adjust your chair when you're sitting. So, if you're playing arpeggios very low, really fast, it's going to be a bit muddy. So, you may want to play some of these arpeggios a bit higher. So, you may want to adjust your chair or your stool or whatever you're sitting on to suit your playing. And we'll take a very rather boring pattern which will be just, just going up the chord. So, let's get started with maybe one of the chords out there. Let's take D minor, everyone's favorite, right? So, D minor, DFA and I'm adding the octave of that. Adding this particular octave, so D, F, A, D, and just cycling through by doing low note, middle note, high note, and then the octave of the low note, so L, M, H, L, L, M, H, L, L, M, H, L, low, middle, okay? And the idea behind the lesson is to play this with semi-quavers, or as fast as possible piano arpeggios of the left hand and play with a lot of control, with a lot of dynamics, with a lot of musicality as well and more importantly not to hurt your hand. So with the years of practice of me doing stuff in the left hand, playing a variety of music like funk, uh, blues, then ballads and a little bit of classical and jazz, I find that the left hand can really hurt at times because sometimes you don't think about it when you're passionately going for it, as we say in the right hand, when you're trying to improvise, you forget that the other hand is an engine, it just keeps running, but the engine needs its fuel, right? So if you, what can happen is in the heat of the moment, because of this adrenaline rush that happens when you're composing in your right hand, you lose sight of the fact that your left hand is getting hurt, that you're, <clears throat> you really need to take a break, or you need to make your left hand as efficient as possible by using a technique that doesn't hurt your hand is still extremely musical and gives you that control. Control, the way I would explain it is when you're playing the left hand or whichever hand or the piano in general in control, you can follow things like the metronome easily, you can record your work easily and if ever something is going wrong in the band or the ensemble you're playing with, it's not because of you at least, it's because of someone else, you're not the root cause of it. So, uh, that's what we are going to do. These are going to be very simple, organic things which I've learned over the years. So get your keyboards out. You can also get your uh, <clears throat> books out if you want to write something. And my notes for this lesson are available on Patreon. You can head over there and support the channel. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. Let's get cracking. So we'll try to divide the suggestions that I have to improve your arpeggio playing by first of all, the correct posture. Then we look at how to improve timing. And then finally, how to retain and bring out musicality while doing all of this at rather rapid speeds. So first of all, when it comes to the posture, when you play this arpeggio, I would say 
Uh, yeah, focus on your hand, but also, as I told you earlier, figure out where you're sitting. You might want to go a bit right or left, depending. Uh, if your piano height cannot be adjusted, maybe the height of your chair could be adjusted. So that's the basics. The other thing when it comes to the piano is, yes, your fingers and your wrist and your forearm are at it, but the support needs to come from the back and the core. So it's okay, I think, to bend your back. I tend to slouch sometimes but whenever you are bending your back keep the shoulders engaged and also keep your core tight as tight as possible so that generally tends to give the body a lot of support don't droop your shoulders like that uh, because if you droop your shoulders and your back is also being rendered as useless your core is relaxed so you need to activate the core you need to keep your back straight uh, which I need to remind myself also at times to do, of course. And you need to activate your shoulder muscles. So your shoulder... So basically, you should be able to play the... You should be able to sit like this. You should be able to sit like this for, well, hours and hours. You should not have a problem. You should, Like how sometimes when we sit on a table, we put our elbow on the table. That gives us support. But then that's not using the shoulder. So we need to strengthen the shoulder... But for the shoulder to work, you need the back and the core. So generally when you sit, try to keep your shoulders active and this is it. So then it becomes easier and then it becomes more about, okay, I am getting pain because there's some issue happening in the forearm or in the uh, uh, palm area or in the wrist area or, or in the finger area. So you kind of isolate the problem. So the first thing I would say when you're doing these arpeggios... Try to avoid stiffness when you play. So if I play this higher, just moving a bit back. Let's take a G minor. Maybe the stiffness because you're using the wrong fingering in the first place. So I'm using pinky, middle, index and thumb. And if you're getting stiffness, it could be due to a few reasons. One is your whole hand has, is dropping and playing. Yeah, your whole hand is dropping, so there's a lot more tension developed. Or your hand could be too high, you know, or I have to say this for those of you who have nails. If you have nails, it's going to be a problem to play the piano. Because you can't, your nail itself will cause slipping. And why would you want to play the piano with your nail? That's ridiculous. You should be playing the piano with the fleshy part of your finger or the, the strong part of your finger. So if... This is the part, you know, this is what gives you maximum impact, maximum control. So don't play, even this is wrong. So don't push, don't drop this joint. When you play the piano, don't drop this joint. This is also wrong. You want to hammer. You want to hammer it and you can hammer it softly or loudly, depending on the the impact you want to give it. And as you hammer it louder and louder, it's your forearm, I feel. Uh, again, I'm not a medical expert, but it's your forearm which is now going to uh, take a bit of a beating. Okay? So all I will say when it comes to your arpeggio playing is to keep your hand as free as possible, as loose as possible, but then that may be a loose term to just say play loosely or play relax. Focus on the muscles and also make sure there is no pinpointed pain on any part of from your fingers to your forearm. There should not be any specific pain. Like you could get a pain here. You could get a pain here in the palm uh, area just under the thumb. This can really hurt at times to a point that you you cannot even play the piano for the rest of the day. So this tends to be a piano muscle. It really hurts. And if you keep using your fingers wrongly, if you bend the joint, then you're going to get fatigued more. And also you might be able to figure this out for yourself in your home. If you bend the joint, it's automatically giving a jolt to the rest of your arm. But if you don't bend the joint, if you keep it like this, the energy is just 
there. It's just focused in and around the palm, finger, wrist area. Okay, so those things are very important. And also, when it comes to the wrist, the way I would like to do it, don't drop it, but don't keep it stiff. Don't keep it stuck in one place. Because if you keep it stuck in one place, then it doesn't get used. And then the other things start, see, now I'm feeling a pain in my forearm because my wrist is stuck. So that's something which you need to figure out. And all this you'll feel at only fast speeds. You know, so <clears throat> what I would then do is if you look at the wrist, I would then circle, do some small circles, not full circles, just these small circles, like just the, the circular motion with my wrist and go with the flow. Just go with the flow. Just try to circle it. For some kind of chord playing, when you're doing block chords, I know I'm going a bit off topic. We were talking about arpeggios. But if you do block chords, I like my hand, my wrist rather, to keep jumping ups, up and down. See? While for arpeggios, I prefer the circular kind of thing. Like almost like you're opening a door like this. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, and also for those of you who can't stretch, if your fing fingers don't stretch an octave, this technique will be even more useful for you because it'll give you that extra, what do you call it, maybe one and a half inches or so, or at least an inch extra, see? So your wrist is kind of helping you get to that octave. There we go, octave. Okay, and you won't have that pain, that, that the, uh, pain while stretching. You know, you know how it is even for a guitar to stretch and play uh, chords, bar chords and so on. The stretch is what I think causes the pain. So if you're feeling a pain while stretching, try to uh, circle, try to make the circles. So the physical aspects would definitely be to circle the wrist and also another thing some people do is they, they tend to keep moving the elbow. So I don't see the point if you look at my elbow and if you can judge by the speed of me playing it, I'm just circling the wrist, I'm not facing that. Yes, there is pain, this is a physical activity. But if I move my elbow, See, I don't see the value of doing this. It's just losing control. It's just annoying. It just looks weird, to be honest. So, so why move the elbow? Don't think that the elbow is giving you uh, anything extra. I, I don't think it is. So, so I would say fix your elbow. The only thing which should be fixed in this entire hand or arm should probably be your elbow. But... Remember the, the bigger muscles, the stronger muscles which our species is mostly used to using like the shoulder, the back and the core which we have been kind of, are, we've been moving forward with those stronger muscles. Use those. Don't throw those away when you're playing the piano. Those are very important. So circle the wrist is what I would say. And the last minor point would be the angle of your palm or your hand. Do you want to you, do you like this angle? Do you want something more straighter? Do you want something a bit more curved this way? Or do you want a kind of a combo of all? This will also work in the right hand similarly well. You know? So maybe the angle of your palm is crucial. And this can come into play when you're doing a bunch of chords. So let's take a four chord progression. G minor, F major, D minor and E flat major. Let's roll with that. One bar of each. And see, for the black chord, I have to angle my palm a little bit more than the white chord, the, 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 the white starting point. There my wrist is more like, hand is more like this, while for the E flat chord, it's more like this. So angle of the hand can be pretty crucial. So again, the worst way to practice arpeggios is to just think that you're doing all of the patterns but with the worst chord of them all. This one. So we've talked about some of the physical things you need to do to make it mechanically efficient. And I'm no expert on this. So I would encourage any of you who have anything more you'd like to add when it comes to arpeggios, any challenge that you have faced while playing them or any solution you found, do leave that in the comments and we can have a great discussion there. 
So now moving forward to timing, how do you improve your timing when you're playing these semi-quaver or super fast arpeggios? The first thing is you should not slip when you play. So you might be doing that very fast, but what if there's a list of chords and you you are intending to play semi-quavers, but it's sounding like a flamenco, thra, like... That also needs control, but you're sounding like a flam. You're not sounding like da -da 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 -da. You're not sounding like an arpeggio. So a great tool would be a metronome. You can get a metronome from a, from a phone. This is a free app called Pro Metronome, which sounds really great. It's very clear, as you can hear, to some level. And practicing with a metronome would be a great tool to 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 improve your strength, to get more control. To, and obviously improve your timing. If you don't want to get an app from a phone, you can literally go to Google and type metronome. And Google itself has a metronome. Uh, you, you can also get a metronome by buying a physical metronome, if that's your kind of thing, I guess. You can put it on top of your piano or whatever. So with the metronome, I like to start slow, maybe at about 80 and now do semi-quavers with respect to 80 beats per minute. So that'll be something like F, D, E flat. And once I've arrived at that, first of all, if you feel that's too fast, you can go slow. Now, when you go slow, you'll realize you didn't have the control in the first place. Or maybe you're designed to play this music on 80 BPM, which I think is a rather horrible feeling. You can only play this on 80 BPM. I think that's ridiculous. You should be able to play it with the same control, with the same feeling on all speeds. So what happens is when you go slower, it pushes your control. Like you'll be basically slipping. So, to so first off, you want to count one e and a two e and a, get into the subdivisions one e and a, which in this case is dividing by four, two e and a, three. So once you've got that, move with the music, move your head to the pulse, one e and and now we can play. So one, two, and starting now. One E and a two E and a three. As you can see, semi quavers are pretty fast, even at uh, 60 BPM. But what might happen, because you you're not got that control yet, you you know it doesn't sound even because you're slipping. And the slipping is not only because you're not so good at timing, it's also because your fingers are not strong enough, you're not practiced enough. And what happens is if you go faster and faster, let's say now you're on 95, it becomes a more of a physical challenge. So remember all the physical tips which I gave you to play the arpeggios without pain. All those become even more important now. You'll have to do this for, well, about a five-minute song and then continue playing a gig for however long it may be, two, three hours, right? So you have to budget your energy also. You have to conserve your energy. So you can't go all out. You have to be very relaxed while doing this. And another suggestion I have for you to get better at timing as you go faster, if you feel you're losing control, you're slipping or your hand is hurting, my suggestion would be then to accent one of the beats of the bar. So you could accent, well, obviously the starting beat, that's beat one, two, three, so, dum, dum, three, one, two, three. So every start of the arpeggio, of course, an arpeggio in this case has many notes. So you could drop the tempo down a notch. Maybe I'll drop it to 70 BPM. And now, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Now, why 
why only whack the one or the down beat maybe the and 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 and, and. and. another way to develop timing especially if you're wanting to make this arpeggio sound a lot more human then e e e e e e e e now the a uh. as you focus further and further you, you want to focus a lot more on the technical aspects uh, the, the physical aspects because at all if you're now getting the metronome you're starting to be a, a bit more musical you're trying to think of what am i doing wrong with respect to timing so then you might forget about all the physical posture tips that i told you and your hand or your arm will start paining even more but that may be because you're you know drooping your shoulders or not using your back so you know it it's all interlinked so you have to start with the posture do it slowly or don't do these arpeggios which are this fast for the the moment for the time being maybe do quaver arpeggios do something slower and then move forward but you want to make the mechanics you want to make the physical movement sort of muscle memory it's just there it just happens right so before we conclude i'd like to give you a few more tips to make this process or experience a lot more musical one thing i think we've already covered was accent one specific note of the arpeggio so you can even kind of reinforce it in the right hand and 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 add that in the right hand maybe the e is very busy and really make sure that you are in the zone when you are playing the piano or playing whatever arpeggio you have to play the next thing i'll talk about a bit more to develop control and musicality is when you're playing arpeggios we tend to use the pedal we tend to just hold the pedal Now throughout the lesson I don't think I've really used the pedal and if you do use the pedal for a bass C arpeggio it's going to sound really poor you can't make out anything clearly so assuming let's not use the pedal for this lesson there are two ways of playing this arpeggio first off you can cascade the notes as i call it or the second option is you can make it a legato style playing so if you cascade it will sound like this where every note is kind of going or spilling into the next note there we go this one now when b flat comes in the previous one continues so this is the style of playing it so if you play the arpeggio like this you don't even need the pedal maybe here and there cascading versus the other technique which is legato it's a lot more cleaner so legato playing would be play the note then the next note play the next note and the previous note has to stop right so you want to also develop the legato technique and make it as fast as the cascade this cascade legato seems very minute right but it's important clean legato 
कैस्केड you always want to move your body yes there is a lot going on but move your body to the pulse that is very very crucial and the last thing i would i'd recommend while doing whatever you do on the piano is focus on your breathing i know it's tough but focus on your breathing from time to time as the breath can give rise to dynamics it can also make you uh, uh, play or get your mindset to be wired to play what you're having to play you can just kind of uh, get you focused so i think breathing has other advantages but just from the physical advantage of breathing for a pianist when you breathe in and out it just controls the muscles and it just does different things from a volume perspective so just breathing in and out will change this arpeggio drastically I'm not even telling myself get louder. I breathe in it just gets loud. Out in out in There you go. And then you can control it half bar in out full bar in out you know uh, of course be careful and while you do all this but yeah breathing just makes things a lot more musical so we've looked at playing arpeggios i guess it could be looked at to play anything but we've made it specific to arpeggios because a lot of the students who i teach solo piano arrangements they they get the melody they crack the melody but for some reason they compromise on the left hand one way to compromise on the left hand which i found is people play just fifth chords they don't bother about actually playing a proper chord in the left hand and the worst and then the other compromise would be just play a simple arpeggio pattern like lhmh ignore the octave do what you want to do do what you love to do also from a left hand bass perspective and build up the right hand rather than take the right hand all the way there with all the ornaments grace notes octave uh, runs uh, sweeps fillers and then you realize your left hand has gone nowhere you know so that's something to keep in mind when you practice the piano so all the best with this take it slow take it one step at a time and uh, let me know in the comments what you thought and also other challenges that you might be facing while playing the instrument and uh, we've done quite a few lessons on arpeggios we link up a playlist there are a lot of left hand arpeggio lessons also to help you work things out and uh, a lot more of this is covered in great detail in our nathaniel school of music semester courses where you can learn from a more basic level if you find this to be a bit more advanced so do consider a course there and my notes are available on the patreon page so you'll find that link in the description thanks a ton for watching the video i will catch you in the next one cheers